A couple of years ago, I reviewed the American version of the Japanese horror flick known as The Ring. And two years later, we got an Americanized take on another Japanese horror flick. And can you believe it's been 20 years today since this came out? So strap yourselves in, because here's my review of The Grudge. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, bear known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2004 supernatural horror flick, The Grudge, released by Columbia and produced by Sam Raimi's Ghost House Pictures. This being the first film to be produced by that label, I'm pretty sure it is. Directed by Takashi Shimizu, written by Steven Susko, and produced by... Mr. Raimi, along with Robert Tabbert and Takasiji Achis. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. A remake of Shimizu's 2002 Japanese horror flick, Juon, The Grudge. It's the first installment in the Grudge film series. It stars Sarah Michelle Geller, along with Jason Bear, Katie Strickland, Clee Duvall, and Bill Pullman. Plot is told through a non-layered sequence of events and includes several intersecting subplots. The film was released on this day, October 22, 2004. Henceforth, today is the film's 20th anniversary. And eventually did pretty well despite getting mixed reviews. The Grudge is a curse, born when someone dies in extreme rage or sorrow and lingers where the person dies. Those who encounter it will die, and the curse is reborn repeatedly, passing from victim to victim in an endless, growing chain of horror. In 2001, Kayako Saiki, a housewife in Tokyo, is in love with her college professor, Pierre Kirk, obsessively writing about him in a diary. Her jealous husband, Takeo, discovers the diary and believes Kayako is having an affair. In a fit of rage, he brutally murders her, their young son, Toshio, and their pet cat, Mar. After Takeo hides the bodies in the house, Kayoko's ghost hangs him with her hair. After receiving a letter from Kayoko, Pierre visits the Saike house, only to find her and Takeo's corpses and Toshio's ghost. Shocked and horrified, he flees the scene and commits suicide the next day. The remainder of the Saiki family rises again as restless ghosts due to the curse, notably Kayoko, who appears as an Onryo. I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of these names or words. I humbly apologize. In 2004, the Williams family from America moved into the Saiki house for Matt's job. While Matt is thrilled with the house, his wife Jennifer, a dementia-ridden mother, Emma, feels uncomfortable. The former experiencing culture shock and feeling lost as she can't speak Japanese, and the latter sensing that something is wrong with the house. The curse quickly consumes Matt and Jennifer. Matt's sister Susan is also haunted as the curse follows her back into her apartment. Yoko, a care worker, arrives at the house to find Emma alone before she encounters Kayoko, who drags her up into the egg. Concerned about Yoko's disappearance, her employer Alex sends another care worker, Karen Davis, to take over the care of Emma. Karen discovers Toshio sealed up in a wardrobe at the house and later witnesses Kayoko's spirit descending from the ceilings to claim Emma. Alex arrives at the house and finds Emma dead and Karen in shock. He calls the police, who come with Detective Nagakawa, Nagaga, Nakagawa, excuse me, in the act, Nakagawa and his partner, Igarashi, find Matt and Jennifer's bodies, along with a human's lower jaw. Meanwhile, Susan is pursued by Kayoko around her office building. At home, Kayoko attacks her, and she vanishes. While leaving work, Alex is killed by Yoko's jawless corpse, and Kayoko begins hunting Karen, who informs her boyfriend Doug of the situation. Now for the ending, you know the procedure. Five cents to stop this video. Go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below. So now countdown. If you've seen this already, please continue. 
Okay, you've been warned. Karen researches the house, eventually confronting Nakagawa, who explains that the curse consumed three of his colleagues investigating the Saiki debts. That night, Nakagawa carries gasoline into the house to burn it down, but is killed by Takeda. Karen races there after learning Doug has ventured to the Saiki house to look for her. She finds Doug paralyzed and attempts to flee with him. Kayoko crawls down the stairs and latches onto Doug, who dies of shock. As Kayoko closes in, Karen sees the gasoline and ignites it. Karen survives, and in the hospital, she learns that the house also survived the fire. Visiting Doug's body, Karen realizes that Kayoko still haunts her. End of story. So what did I think of The Grudge? Well, I, though I've only seen a few times, just not as much as I've seen The Ring, I will say that The Grudge is definitely a pretty freaky fright fest. It's a pretty good American take on this Japanese film. Uh, I've never actually came the time to see the Japanese version, like, well, same with The Ring. I am going to say this film still has some, a pretty eerie feel to it, definitely. Anyway, uh, upon its release, the film did pretty well. It went on to make 180, 800, 187.3 million. Let me reverse that. 187.3 million worldwide against its $10 million budget. The reviews were mixed. Rotten Tomatoes has a score of 41, saying there's some creepy imagery to be found, but not much in the way of logic or truly jarring scares. Metacritic has a score of 49. In some reviews, Roger Ebert was not thrilled. He said, I'm not sure how most of the scenes fit into the movie. I do, however, understand the underlying premise. There is a high house, and everybody who enters it will have unspeakable things happen to them. And criticized the fragmented time structure, and said he eventually lost all patience. However, Scream Rant was good on it, but in the end, unfavorably compared the film to The Ring, writing it, um, Shimizu, who also wrote and directed the original, does a decent job of setting the mood of the film, and to a lesser extent, developing the storyline, but to be so similar to a movie that came out only two years ago, it's a tough obstacle to overcome. Of course, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, I understand what they're saying and what have you. But I have seen this a few times, and it's, like I said, pretty eerie. The story's fine and what have you. The music was done by Christopher Young, and I'm going to say that's that he does a good good job on this film score. For our cast, we have Sarah Michelle Gellar, just fresh a year after Buffy the Vampire Slayer had just been canceled, plays the character Karen Davis. I really do like her performance in that role. Jason Bear played Doug. He was good. William Mapother played Matthew. He did pretty good. Clee Duvall played Jennifer. Really good. Not too bad. Katie Strickland played Susan. Not bad. Grace Zabriski. That name does sound familiar. You might remember Grace Poole of Child's Play 2. And Bill Pullman played Peter. Also, um, as a little fun experience, Sam Raimi's brother, Ted, who, re who had recently appeared in his brother's Spider-Man films. Of course, this was released a few months after Spider-Man 2 was released, plays Alex. And Ryo Ishibashi played Nakagawa. So anyway, I think all these characters, they can be good, and sometimes they might be a little miss, or whatever, a hit or miss, and whatever. But of the whole, I found the grudge to be pretty eerie and and frightening, and whatever, but I thought it was a pretty good fright fest. Doesn't but it didn't quite come on par to my liking of the American version of The Ring, though. But it managed to do its best, though. After this, there would go on to be two sequels. One would be The Grudge 2, which came out two years later in 2006. But that got this big time. Even though it was... Uh, 
How should I put it? Hmm. Well, which um Shimizu also directed. And well, it eventually did okay and what have you, uh, but not quite as much as the first one did. There were the third one would be a direct video sequel, and then there would be a more recent 2020 reboot that came out just before the pandemic even occurred. So with everything said, the grudge isn't too bad, but would I recommend it? Well, I think I'd say I'd give this a one-time watch if I were you. But if you like the American version of The Ring, then you might want to feel right at home with this one. Or if you like the Japanese version, if you see it, then I'd say you'll feel right home with this one if you if you want to. So anyway, that's it. That's going to do for this review. What did you think of The Grudge? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, consider clicking the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Continue to help support my channel. Make it grow and make the views grow. Tell all your friends about my channel. Give them to the know me, and, we'll be a, and they can probably be part of this Big D Nation of mine. I am... Um, or you can share my vids with your friends if you wish. Stuff like that. Join me next time when I bring to you a re-review of Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. So if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for some of these other films. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the Americanized version of The Ring from 2002. The upper right-hand corner is my review of John Carpenter's Ghost of Mars from 2001, which Clee Duvall was in, by the way. Or you can see an, my review of another film she was in, and that was The Faculty from 1998. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.